What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Nikki, here. Welcome back to the peeps. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today, we are playing some more Dream Daddy. Um, I've really been enjoying this game a lot. And, like, I've enjoyed this game more than I did playing Doki Doki. Um, <laughs> so, let's get into it. Um, let's just, just go. Let's just go. Uh, wow, I really guess I didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. Uh, so I'm going to have to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? A big burned out neo sign hangs from above the bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alrighty, it'll do. This bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover over the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I just pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me a cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. I can't stand beer. Beer, to me, is just disgusting. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on the TVs on the wall. Which, luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I never thought I'd say those words. Jesus Christ. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh, no. I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Nick, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. I'm getting the impression she's a little drunk. You think? You think? Yeah, a, l a little bit. Uh, ah. buy a gal a drink? Buy Mary a drink? Don't buy Mary a drink. Um... Uh, you know what, let's, let's be nice and buy her a drink, fuck it. I almost reluctantly signal the bartender and order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary, they're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. I suppose I gotta keep you company hey. now. So, what do you want to know? What's your deal, what do you think of the game? What's the latest gossip around here? Um... What's the latest gossip around here? You came to the right broad. Ah. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything. I know everyone. Nothing gets past me. So... Come on. So what? I thought you were gonna... Hmm. I forgot what we were talking about. About the gossip. You said something... Nothing gets past you. Alright. I'm also steel traps. Confidential to a fault. So what else can you tell me about this part of town? Mm. It's quiet, that's for sure. If you like... Italy see little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans hey. closer. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh boy. Uh, maybe some other time? Ugh. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary slaughters off setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close to what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player chooses a number of points from the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. This- <gasps> Oh my god, it's him! It's him, guys! Guys, it's him! Am I gonna get the dick? I don't know. I hope so. Let's see! It's the broiding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, 
Suck the fuck up phone! I'm trying to get laid! Sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am, now that they're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since as it's standing right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there and we're both back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, which makes both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet, cheery, ripples to the bar. I raise a respectable glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response, an unspoken truce formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. My name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Nick. <laughs> you must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Hey. No, that'll be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Oh, okay. Mm. You a whiskey fellow or a beer fellow? Beer, but I'll drink most things. Uh -huh. You like shots? Ooh, shots fired. I don't like them. I love shots. Okay, honestly, I love shots, so we're just going with I love shots. Oh, he liked that. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns as it's going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Nick. This guy's out of my friends league. <laughs> yeah, you fucking think! But if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. We compliment his cool leather jacket, compliment his rugged good looks, compliment his hand tattoo. Oh, fuck. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm trying to get into this dude's pants. Um. Jesus. Uh. I'm just gonna compliment his rugged good looks. No, that'll be too straightforward. I don't want to be creepy. Fuck! Oh, okay. Um, uh, I, honestly, I would compliment his hand tattoo. I wouldn't go straight for the rugged good looks because I wouldn't want to be awkward. I would go honestly for the tattoo because I too am tattooed and I appreciate a good tattoo. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? Oh, fuck! I fucked up! No, I'm not getting the dick! It's a reminder. I wait for him to elaborate, but he seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. I... Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, my daughter kicked me out of the house, turning away from my problems, trying to make friends. Um, uh, my daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was trying to have a sleepover with friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. Hmm? <laughs> he gets up. Be right back. Got a powder in my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha! Huh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruffy charm about him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then it really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Okay. Okay, this can end one of three ways. He's either gonna walk me home, rob me, or fuck me. I'm good with either of those. <laughs> Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cold sack down the way. Oh my god, I'm neighbors with him. Uh, does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished our packing today. Not that my voice is high pitched or anything from your rugged good looks, which I definitely should have complimented you on, but I had to go for the fucking hand tattoo, which was obviously a bad thing to do. Oh, uh, please take me home I'm like a lost puppy. I just want to go home with you, please. 
Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is a few blocks away from mine. We stop and he turns mm. to me. I don't kiss and tell, Nick. Oh. <sighs> so are we doing this or what? What? Oh. You know, do you want to come inside or not? Oh, a wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, la, 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 la. Um, ah, uh, ah, uh, what do I do? What do I do? I didn't think I would get up to this point. Fuck. Oh, uh, mm. lay it on smooth. Smile not. I'm afraid if I lay it on smooth, it's going to be too cheesy and then he's not going to want to fuck me. Um, <clears throat> fuck it. Lay it on smooth. Well, I don't see why not. <sighs> Sounded smoother in my head. Oh, fuck. Let's do it. Oh! Oh! Oh, I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with the keys for a second and locks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. <gasps> I am about to be one very fucking happy camper right now. Come on. Ah! Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs into what I assume is his bedroom. But it's so dark I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again and I can hear him shuffling off his jacket. I come clumsily take off mine, his hands roaming down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want me to stop? Fuck no, I don't want you to stop. My character needs to stop being such a little bitch. No. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Oh my god! Whoo! Oh my god! Oh god. Oh, my eyes are watering. Oh, fuck. Sunlight streams in between the slats and the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. Oh, right. I look around for Robert, but I find myself alone. He fucked me and then left me? I mean, I, I, I would have guessed that, but still. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Huh. You should go. Are you fucking asshole? Why do I like you so much? <laughs> That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you mm -hmm. later. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. Hey. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home and suddenly I remember... Amanda! <laughs> oh no! I'm a bad dad! I went and got my dick wet and left my kid at home! Oh shit! Ah! I rush back home and throw open the door. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen looking slightly disappointed. Aw oh, man, I was kind of hoping you'd gotten kidnapped and I was going to have to come rescue you. No, I uh, made friends at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where's the Emmas? They left a little while ago. Oh, do you guys have fun? Yeah, watch some movies, ate some snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. Your teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's it all about? Mm. Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Can I? Ugh. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ah, gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Oh, someone's, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. You wouldn't happen to have an aspirin or... Hi. I've got just the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs over to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Right. Drink this. Oh, yeah. Pickle juice is, is always good for a hangover. The pickle juice? Yep. It's what I used once. Ah, would assume someone would use. 
I would also assume that it works pretty well. Hmm. Although I've never tried it before, and won't try it, obviously. Who raised you, Amanda Ann? Give her a stern yet resigned side eye. Hmm. Um, you did. Right. Um, do as I say, not as I do. You got it. <laughs> this better work. I down a slip of the tart yeah. juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. Whoa. I mean, I assume... Hmm. Watch it, you. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and drinking several pieces... And dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack yeah. and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget to meet up with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Yeah. Always do. We do our secret handshake and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change my clothes, and head on my way to still a little hungover. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and relieved that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks at me. Oh, cool. <laughs> the youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lidded eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you going to help me or not? Sigh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's classroom anyway. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent... <laughs> Fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Lucian, don't you have third period to get to? Sigh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Uh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Nick. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leans me in and sets me in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck oh. in this. Right, where were we? Who could tell me about the unreliable un unreliability of the narrator in JD Salinger's Catching in the Rye? Hmm. Catcher in the Rye. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does a thing where he bows blows the Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart mm. noise. The whole class erupts in mm. laughter. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Mm. Please sit down. Now, Holden Col Colfield is a reliable narrator in the sense that the bell ends for the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer those responsive questions on page 194 in your textbook. Every, nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Mm -hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega? Mm -hmm. Please, call me Hugo. I don't know. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? <sighs> Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally talk this up to seniority, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hasn't crossed my mind that something might be I wrong. I don't know. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved, she's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Um, we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it's only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more than excited about ah. it than I was. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this <sighs> road. I know how to... 
how important art school is for her, and I would rather see her miss out on the, and I would hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me oh. know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Ah. Yes? Did they ever catch the ride? Hmm? Yes. Oh my goodness! He liked that! Honestly, that's probably something that I would do too. Just, just because I'm me. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with class for today, but I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossip gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Badalini the whole time? That was very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some for dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to the mall food court. Um, let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to oh. me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But sometimes it's good to have the parent's perspective, because, you know, maybe the parent has also dealt with similar uh -huh. situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega says you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning mm -hmm. things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritist and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Yeah. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I, Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me Ugh. about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh... I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Mm. Amanda keeps testing. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. What is my kid hiding? I swear to God. Who are you texting? Ha ha! Exactly! Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Aww. Dad. I mean, geez. Why would you? Ah. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just ask him. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward to tur and turns up the radio. I guess the conversation is over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop mall security guards from yelling at groups of loitering teens. Let's eat some disgusting dinner. Yeah. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Huh? Heck yeah. Better. Hmm. We approach the food court and, elev and elevate our options. Evaluate. Not elevate. Evaluate. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread dipped and cheese on it or you just want to inject some fatty some fat directly into your bloodstream i extend my hand to her would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos oh. she takes my hand with a grin that would make me the happiest cheesiest girl alive we order a giant plate of chips and a naturally orange cheese from a very enthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager we take a seat at a rackety table hey. and dig in these are bad 
These are very bad, but also strangely delicious. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheese goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, huh. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no, please don't go down this rabbit hole. Please, I'm begging you. Oh my god, please no. Oh Jesus. Sigh, which meme? All. All memes. We literally, in order to explain one meme, we literally have to go back through the entire history of memes to the first meme ever posted, and we ain't got time for that. Aww. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. <sighs> Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that gets less funny the more people do it. So the problem is, by the time that meme gets to you, Dad, all of us use has already done the joke to Ugh. death. And what's worse is that the movies and TVs and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but it's just based on how long it takes them. The meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it so it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? <gasps> Dad, please. Ah. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to the goth store? Huh? What? You know, the one that's all black. <laughs> is he fucking talking about Hot Topic? I swear to God. <laughs> You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being the exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and basically <laughs> an assault on the people who fought so hard against in the punks and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Hmm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in the one time. Oh, that one. Yes. Amanda runs into the store and tells with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the hey. back. There it is! You can see the outline! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud? Speech! Amanda? Yeah! Speech! 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 Alright! I'll do it if you stop chanting! Oh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today. This commemorate a historical movement that will forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and Riley had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among the possessions. Huh. Thank you. Amanda is moved and begins clapping slowly at first and faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their head. Patrons turn their head. One of them almost starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh, hey! Chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking for band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest. Not much for a dad to look at in dead goth and beyond. Pause at the band t-shirt, look at the iconic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. Uh... So what type of band t-shirts they have. I barely know any of these pans. Cannibal Bone Party doesn't seem like music I enjoy, but they really must be happy that the rental outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. Look, this is very important to me. I over... I'm sorry, I didn't know fucking Dracula was in this game. Hello. I overhear a stifled argument over the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with a pink hat. I can see that. Don't you know what, don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work oh here. Oh my. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edward and Dr Dress Dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, I would like to have... It seems I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeeper. Your superiors will have received a strong worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out. He's literally... His literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hmm. Hey! 
Datron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops a shirt into the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull out something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clearly the and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find some things to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool! Long haul paranormal ice road truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yes. They have to make over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Bro, I would totally freaking watch that! Bro, what? Oh. Also, the trucks are haunted. Oh, hell yeah, sign me up. <laughs> this is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Colum and Flint, Dogbone, our twin brother truckers, and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer them from here. Damn, ice roads. Let me use this EMF meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! Uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. That's because we're going to die, you! This is an art. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Colum and Flint Dogbone after their dis dysterious ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get some good night's sleep. How are you guys enjoying the game so far? I hope you guys are. It's to your liking. I'm a very sleepy boy. Morning, sleepyhead. As I said, I'm a very sleepy boy. Give me five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes. So get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spent the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is such a better interpreter of the teeny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, and I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, you're excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to the parties. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks oh. to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. I definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fabulously late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows me. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with store-bought veggie plate. I'm terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Huh? I guess we're not as early as we thought. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs whips through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our bled- Bledgy? Our bledgy. I set our bledgy plate down on the bled blah 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 I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to him to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Arms open wide. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here! And you brought veggies! <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my uh. eldest. Hi. Uh. This is Kristen and Christine. They're twins. Ah. The strange... I'm getting some real... Um, red rum vibes here. Why are they all... Have they all been dressed in pink and blue? Wait a minute. Are they a cult? Oh my god. Is this family a cult? This family's secretly a cult, aren't they? Oh my god. With their dead expressions and all. Oh, they're definitely a cult. Oh god. Can you put your cult dick in my ass? They stare creepily and say nothing. <laughs> then of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, the woman from the bar the other night. What's she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Oh! Ah. 
Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Ah. I have to go look for him. Mm. What? You have to. <laughs> Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mm. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Nick and his daughter, Amanda. Okay, I don't want to jump and assume anything, but I'm getting some really hostile vibes. We have the dad who dresses very posh. The kids who dress the exact same, who look dead in their eyes, and the mother who's clearly an alcoholic and can't keep track of the children. I think there's some, uh, there's some stuff going behind the scenes. Now, I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge, but that's what my first impression is. And I don't think that this is the happy family that we're seeing. I don't believe that for a second. Okay, with that now in mind, I'm kind of scared to be here. I don't think I want his Christian dick in my bum hole anymore. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Nick and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy to not run away from this barbecue and a fresh start in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try to find and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins filling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Dad. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have a... Do party tree. Pleasant trees. Huh. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about the weather. Ugh. Go. Do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. There's a plate of cookies. Is my new. Dad, Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around at the party and I'm surprised to see familiar faces. Isn't that the brister from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang. Robert's here, too. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? <clears throat> Isn't that guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All these people live in the cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Robert and Brian, Matt Hugo and Craig, Joseph and Damien. Go talk to Robert and Brian. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened last night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. <laughs> Nick! How the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood, all right. Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear! I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Nick, have you met Robert yet? Yes. I believe we met. Briefly. Mm. Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Robert robotically extends his hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? H how's it going? Mm. <clears throat> it's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. Great! Look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know? Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. I... Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. C cool. That's cool. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until... We gotta get off this haunted truck! Oh, no. The ghost locked the doors. Uh. Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God. Yeah. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. The truck doesn't have an emergency escape uh. button. Ah, uh, then hit the brakes, I guess. And then get out of the truck. Yeah. The imaginary truck. Anyways, we're safe from the ghost. But how will we ever survive this Arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials prepared to properly cook you. Wait a second. Are you guys playing 
Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers. Yeah! Amanda and I love that show. <laughs> it's the best, especially the episode where Calm and Flint keys Anne. Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient curse in the year and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such a quality reality television. Yeah, Daisy, I found us a couple bugs. They're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Going to keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. <laughs> Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with a mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Yeah. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yay. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I skim the party, finally find him talking in the cor to corner to Mary. Does he not want to talk? Right. Man, I've never seen her get along with someone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert induced haze. I guess Amanda just is sort of that way with kids. Right. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, that's nice. He's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. She, Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. Oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required by law. Hey, since we're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> well, don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellows. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. <clears throat> <clears throat> Matt, Hugo, and Craig seem to be embroiled embro in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiles politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art moments like that. Periods in art only exist because they're unique by product of the social and political climate of time and place. And try to take something like that, say Ricardo, Rococo, Rococo, Coco, Coco's a good movie. I love Coco. And compare it to the most modernist in America. You're completely disagreeing with the context of what art is, of what art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Listen hmm. on to Matt. Uh, what kind of comparison just eliminates the reason of art movements are so important in the first hmm. place? You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm in comparing one work of two of two art. F I can't fucking rub <laughs> You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You would definitely say one painting is better than the other if you're evaluating technique skills from a purely formulist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say shows more technical powers? I'm so lost right now. I should shoot a... I'm so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig who returns uh. it. Well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse were better paintings overall. Oh, art is dead! Oh my god, no, don't say that. Oh shit, they're all looking at me. Okay, um, if I s I just really want to say art is dead just for the freaking meme, but at the same time, I really don't want to piss anybody off. Haha, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking know. about. We're just discussing the important context of talking about artwork. Listen, all we asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Um, Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post imposition and the abstraction of beautiful whatever? Man, this is way above my head. Me too. Haha, hey. <laughs> it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we perceive it differently. A single piece that have totally different effect on each person. I look at it. That's all. Awesome. Oh. Just one mi minute about that. Hugo, please. Mm. 
Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Nick, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's super friendly. Hey. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass. Picking wheels and weaving them into flower and crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girls I don't recognize hey. jog over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute hey. in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on hey. top of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey Nick, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm... Karamista? Huh. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. <laughs> Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool brister from the coffee shop? And my old college friend? And, uh, your teacher? Whoa. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize you were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term Dad. paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger gun move from me. I'm very oh. proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Hugo looks around the party. He finally spots him because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest! Ernest Timmy! <laughs> funny but i did ernest hemingway vega are you smoking mm -hmm. ernest is holding a lit cigarette nope i see ernest across the way he casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into the mm. gutter unbelievable excuse me hugo marches over to ernest and i turn my attention to matt and craig kids right hey. man i do not envy hugo the last barbecue we had ernest tried to shove a sprinkler down joseph's pants nearly burnt down half the yard Oh, a sparkler, not a sprinkler. I was like, how the fuck is a sprinkler going to burn down half the yard? Oh. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burnt down half the yard. And then it spread into my lawn and burned down half my yard, too. <laughs> Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that, Nick. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, uh, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Oh, what? Hmm. Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off and stands in the corner. Well, that was that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hand and sighs. Ah. I'm so sorry. He's really having a rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents oh. me for that. I mean, I think that as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly. Are any of us cool dads? Is that even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as oh. a cucumber. See, that right there? You can't say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh, don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that dads were becoming the machine we once raged against and accept the fate to ironically wear socks and sandals your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment you hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18, and she still thinks I'm cool. I yelled across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? <laughs> Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh. As much as we all want. I, <laughs> I would do that too with Thomas, though. Jesus. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be as be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. 
Our job as parents is to make our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing the guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along well, but there might have come a time it won't be like that. Is that when college Why? will happen? No, let it eat up your time, Nick. Go make some of the other go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Go talk to Joseph and Damien. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from the dead goth and beyond by the grill. I wonder if they're talking about. I walk over oh. to them. So I'm curious, can you talk to me through the way you had your house painted black? Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Uh. That's definitely an interesting choice. Oh. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Nick! I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down and with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I <clears throat> must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Hmm. I hope you know that while my anger has been justified, it was still s no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Huh. Do tell about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth hmm. and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over at Amanda, who's hanging with some of the older kids in the oh neighborhood. Oh, my. Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as the hipster with some normal quarreling <laughs> leanings. Bats are cool, though! Hmm. Ah, pity. Oh. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's really nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is friendly and welcoming. Hey. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? That would be... That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and bows, producing a singular rose and offering it to Amanda. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. My! Do you know how to treat a lady? <laughs> Hello, Amanda. Seeming out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, they are speaking in Whoa. unison. Ha hey, won't you come play Stay with, with us? us? Uh, come play with us forever. Yeah. Guys, enough with the creepy twin sneak. We've talked about this. Christine and Christine slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Yeah. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the oh wine. Oh my god. I think I might have taped over the VeggieTales VHS with a shining. Who knows? She takes another sip of the <laughs> wine. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? <laughs> you had him a moment ago. Oh. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to ah. me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. This is my fourth. Ugh. I've had to squeeze four little sweetheart. Would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. <clears throat> I'm sure he's fine. Mary? Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Oh, it's you little shit. Huh. Ah, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Nick yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christian Knees, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Huh. Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. Ugh. Make that two veggie burgers. 
Do you know that some people in the Victorian area are vegetarians? They describe carnivorous types of people as blood lappers. Dad. Huh. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the girl with a hint of a tattoo peeking from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It, it looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know? That's cool. Want to see mine? What? what? Lucy and pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healed up pretty good. Lucian! Mm. We'll talk about this later. Mm. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? Oh my god! You're, you, the fucking youth pastor doesn't know what the 666... Wow, okay. I don't know. I just thought it looked oh. sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful thought. That number weight. That number carries weight. Man. Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. <laughs> he was probably a drug addict. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. The greatest of his ease sets the patties down on the grill flourish as he flips a spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill moves I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing the cheese onto the patties and per perfectly grilling the onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and the crowd around Joseph admires his masterful techniques. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't know this, Nick, but Joseph is known around here for his grill membership. Uh. He's ungrillable. Hey. I've tried getting on his level, but I just can't catch up. Okay. Let us keep studying. He's a rare, <laughs> he has a rare quality about mm. him. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we appreciate the artist? Hey. I've never seen him make a mistake. Oh. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Mm. Please stop. All of the children at the party, party, God damn it. Ah, oh, all the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns yeah. in unison. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying the perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. All right. I think this is where we're going to stop off for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Oh, I enjoyed it with as many reading mistakes as I made. It was still a very enjoyable. Um, I, I, got, I got the dick. It was enjoyable. It was enjoyable because I got the dick. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!